Hey, what's up, everybody? It's fucking Schnell. It's a uh, Tuesday. It's almost time for Decibel Weekend. It starts on Friday. Sadly, Madrid is drying, bro. It happens, you know. I never canceled a show when I was in my band, but I'm not sure what the reasons are. So it, and they got somebody else. I'm not sure who it is. Uh, uh, Dirkita? Uh, that Dirkita? Uh, I don't know who that is. I've never heard them. But, like, guys, I, I was really looking forward to, like, seeing, like, Magruder Dryan because it's been so long. The last time I saw them, like, I played with them in a basement in West Philly, like, in 2006. Like, that's fucking 10 years ago. So, whatever. I'm slacking sometimes. I mean, but, uh, I was thinking, uh, you know, it's a, it's a rainy, gloomy day outside, so I felt like listening to some fucking early Paradise Lost, like, just gothic. Like, like I love the new Paradise Lost, like, don't get me wrong, like, it's fucking brilliant. Like, The Plague Within was one of, it's in my top ten list from last year. I'm not even the biggest, like, fucking, uh, Paradise Lost fan, like, I like Gothic, and I like their new record, and that's about it, like, I don't like all that weird shit, and I'm sorry, but, like, some of the, like, their records are just terrible, there, I'm sorry, I know you got, like, Paradise Lost has a very, like, cult following, and, like, people like Albert, like, a decibel that have, like, every color of every original pressing of their vinyls, like, sick shit. And I respect the fuck out of that. Like, that's awesome. And, but I just wish they would have stuck to this fucking sound. Like, it's so good. I know they have other records that sound like this, but they started getting out of control. And then before I know it, I'm like... What am I listening to? Like, it, it, it sounds embarrassing. It's like a metal guilty pleasure, but it shouldn't be because, like, it is so much better than every other, like, what you would consider a mainstream sounding metal band to sound like. But, like, with Paradise Lost, like, gothic record, like, 1991, as we all know. Big year for underground music, for heavy music in general. I was kind of upset that, you know, Guns N' Roses was on the cover of Decibel, but then I was like, oh, like, we gotta help keep Print alive, so if Joe Schmo walked by, like, if for some reason he's in a, a bookstore and then sees Guns N' Roses, and 1991 yearbook on the cover, they're gonna get it. So whoever's idea this was, like, not to put, like, fucking, you know, like, Carcass on the cover or, like, somebody, like, fucking, you guys really made a good marketing decision, and I really, like, hope that this, like, issue alone gets not only, like, people my age, I'm 31, but, like, also, like, today's youth can use this issue right here. It's, uh, sorry. It's March, uh, 2016, and it's the, uh, issue number 137. Congratulations on that, Decibel. I know you're a little bit higher now, but this issue is one of the most important in Decibel's, like, history, because of, like, there's a list on, in here of pretty much the top 30 albums of 1991, and that's what we're going to talk about right now, because 1991 is a very, 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 very fucking, like, weird year. And we're going to stick to that 1991 theme musically on this, so we're going to put some fucking bolt thrower on.
Just because why the fuck not, man? Let's listen to Awful War Master because War Master came out in 1991. Let's put on Destructive Infinity. Fucking killer song, dude. I'm gonna turn it up. I don't care if I talk over it. Oh, there, a little louder. Fuck. So heavy. But. I made my coffee super strong today. So, uh, anyway, if you're a kid and, like, you want to know, like, what bands to check out from, like, the past, like, if for some reason you're, like, you have an issue with decibel, like I said, you're just either a kid or, like, a, an older guy, and, like, you don't really know that much about, like, metal's past, but you have the internet, so you have no fucking excuse, but... On this top 30 list, like, like, this will keep you busy for, like, a week. Like, for real. Like, dude, fuck yeah, man. I wish Bolt Thrower was playing this weekend. And, like, also, like, like shit, like, even I, I've never heard of, uh, this Pig Face record, uh, for Gov. But, like, everything else I, I've heard of is that's on this list. I don't know, somebody at Decibel loves Soundgarden, like, they always, like, I, I hate sound, I just don't like, I don't know, I'm not a, not a big fan, it's just, it's not my cup of tea, I'm sorry, but 1991, I ride BMX as well, as you can see, my wound is healing nicely, it's not a swollen, scabbing, it's good, but, um, Fucking, I was thinking, like, you know, all this crazy, awesome stuff, like, happened in 1991, like, in BMX and in underground music, in underground music, especially, like, you know, like, Metallica was the biggest band in the world, like, yeah, the Black Album isn't fucking Ride the Lightning or Master of Puppets, like, it's its own... Like, as much as I talk shit on the Black Album, if I was to get a, co like, a copy on vinyl, I would listen to it. Like, why the fuck not? Like, it's the same thing with, like, I'm trying to... That, actually, yeah, that, that is the last Metallica record I would listen to if I had, if I had to. Like, there's no way I would sit, like, if I saw a copy of, like, Load, or, uh, e even Death Magnetic, like, everybody's like, oh, dude, it sounds like old metallic, and that sounds like fucking shit, alright? And anyway, like, check this out. Again, speaking of 1991, this is, like, so much insane shit because of the Black Album, like, the touring that went on, it's just... I'm sure, like, a lot of you have this, I mean, I'm sure, it, like, this Metallica discography on the back is so fucking sick, like, I would, imagine having, like, a copy of this, like, they have this at my record store, the original, like, Garage Days. Well, like, I've never, like, even heard of, like, like, I didn't know they had, like, a 7-inch for, like, Creeping Death and fucking, like, Jump in the Fire. Uh, this one's kind of hard to read. But, uh, like, Eye of the Beholder. Oh, Harvester of Sorrow. Fuck yeah. Like, I, I had the singles. I, I, I definitely had the singles from the Black Album. Because I, I was a fucking... I was a young kid. And, you know, why, why the fuck not? <laughs> like, I, I liked Metallica back then. Like, you know, I thought the Enter Sandman video was cool. Like, the way it was edited. Like, when the truck hit the bed. And it's like... And it feels like... Boom! I don't know, I always thought that was, like, kind of cool. 
I mean, it, it, it's not cool, but I, I thought it was cool. I'm trying to think what like, I feel like listening to from 1991. It's like, like I want something good for you guys, but I'm just like wasting time. I should have. This is why you should fucking write shit down. Like, you know what? Let's put on the fucking Morbid Angel record that everyone fucking hated. Even I've never, like, really listened to it that much, because, like, a lot of people are like, yo, this is, like, the best Morbid Angel record, but, like, I always, like, just, I never, like, I love Altars of Madness, like, and Blessed Be the Sick, like, I remember just, I'm not just saying this because those fucking crazy Norwegians, like, thought, like, this record was like the downfall of Morbid Angel and that they were posers and shit because they wore sweatpants and that this record didn't sound exactly like fucking altars but like it's got I, I, I know it's got that fucking Florida Scott Burns more sound but it has that sound but it fucking rules like Because Trey Asgaroff's one of the best guitar players in, he might, I think he is, yeah, in my opinion, he's my favorite death metal guitar player. He's come up with some of my favorite riffs, him and Scott Hall, my two favorites, but 1991 was a sick year for like DMX, like, I, I broke a pair of pitchforks a couple years back, and I sent them to Muller to get my, you know, new pair, because I have a lifetime guarantee. He sends me back a note with a pair of 1990, like, error fucking S&M pitchforks. Now, they're not from 1991, but back in the day, 14 millimeter, like, didn't exist, and... Same thing, like, up front, like, you would break axles every month, like, no matter what, you're breaking a fucking axle, there's no way around it. So, the, they created these things called peg bosses, which, the axle will be here, but above it, the peg is, it was so stupid, but, I got sent a six pound pair of s and ditch forks instead of pitch forks, Never got my pitchforks smaller, by the way, but with a note on it that said, try and break these, Chris Muller, and I was like, bravo, it's a good joke, but where's my forks? But as you can hear, like, this isn't a bad fucking record, but we all know, and even Decim, I'm not saying it's just because Decibel said it, but we all know the best record from 1991 is right here. Fucking Sepultura Arise. We all know it, so let's put the let's just put this fucking breakdown on for here. I was talking to my friend Greg at a Goody's Disc Exchange this weekend and uh, oh shit, he told me when Beneath the Remains came out, like, they played that non-stop because no one had ever heard anything like that. Guys, this is Snow, Peace, and Pussy.